Thank you, Lord. I can't help but to praise God on today. I can't help but to ask this question. How many out there love God on today? I know that there's no doubt in anybody's mind here that God is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I want to praise God. I want to glorify God because God is who he said he is. Thank you, Lord. As I look in Psalms 145 and 2, thank you, Jesus. And I've, I've said this so many times. I love this scripture. It says, every day will I bless you, Lord. And I will praise your name forever, forever, forever. It was a continuation for David. David said, I will always praise you. How many here want to praise God on today? Not only for what he has done in your life, but most of all, because of who he is. I got up this morning and I began to listen to a song by Alvin Slaughter. I heart, bless me. He said, I come to this house just to praise you. He was talking to God. My worship received I'm praying, Lord, please. I won't let this time be in vain. Oh, I want y'all to think about that. Let me say that one more time. He said, I won't let this time be in vain. For I am determined to praise you. That last part, last part of that song said, I am committed to bless your name. Let me ask the question this morning. How many in here today, whether you're standing or whether you're sitting, you are committed to bless God? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. If you are committed to bless God on today, regardless of what I'm saying, I'm just asking you to stand on your feet because God wants your all and your own. If you didn't bless him before you left home, you have the opportunity to bless him right now. Now just lift your hand and tell God, Lord, I just want to thank you. Come on and bless God on today. Whatever way you want to bless him, come on and bless him. Come on, give him your all. Be committed to this blessing, to this worship, to this praise, to this glorification. Be committed. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, because we are committed today to praise you. You said it in your words, God, in your word, God, through David, that we should always praise you. We bless your name today, Father God, because of who you are. We thank you, God, because of your greatness. We thank you because of your love. We thank you because of the joy of the Lord that's in the inside of us. Thank you, Lord God, for the Spirit of God that's in this place on today. We ask, God, that you will move amongst your people as you are now, God, as the word go forth, God, as the music plays, God, as the, the, the praise team sing, oh God. We ask, God, that you will stir up in this place in the name of Jesus. And God, after it is done, God, we will again worship and praise you and commit ourselves, commit our praise, commit our worship to you in the name of Jesus. And God, we will give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. For this prayer is in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and clap your hand again. And just praise him because he is worthy of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings. Thank you, God. You're in the hands of the praise team. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How many of you know that hallelujah is the highest praise? Yes.
there's freedom though you captured me I've got joy instead of mourning there's beauty in my brokenness I've got true love instead of pain there's freedom though you captured me I've got joy instead of mourning there's beauty there's beauty in my brokenness I've got true love I've got true love instead of pain there's freedom though you can freedom
praise the Lord, saints. Our God is holy. Our God is holy. Holy is our God. This is a wonderful day. I know it's snowing outside and it's raining and it's doing all kinds of stuff. We've had all the weathers in one week, all the seasons in one week. But that's just, um, you know, God's way of letting you know I'm on my way. You better get ready. It said in the word that we won't be able to tell the seasons. This is supposed to be spring, and we got a little bit of winter. On Thursday, we had a little bit of summer. We better get ready, amen? Our God said he's holy. He is holy. Amen. I am here to welcome any first-time guests here to Kansas City Community Church. If we have any first-time guests, can we just lift our hands? Amen. We are all home, folk. We have a few visitors, but I'm pretty sure we'll get to that later. Hey, hey somebody, we have somebody living here? Amen, amen. Well, we just want to say welcome to Kansas City Community Church on behalf of our very own Pastor Charles Cofield Jr., his lovely wife, Joy, which I don't see over there right now. But we just want to say welcome to Kansas City Community Church. We are about love here at Kansas City Community Church, but we don't like to just talk about it. We like to be about it. And Kansas City Community Church, we know what we do. So let's get up and do what we do. And go hug somebody that you didn't hug, that you, did, you didn't hug last week. Hug somebody new. Don't just hug the same person. Amen? Amen. I do. 
How can you love How me? How can you love me? Knowing all, knowing all the things I've done. And then you show me. And then you show me. When you gave your only son. I really love you. I really love you. I really love you. Yes, I do. Because you are the air I breathe. You are the air I breathe. And you are the song I sing. You are the song I sing. today. The psalmist said, I love the Lord because he heard my cry and he delivered me. Amen. We thank God on today because he is a deliverer. Amen. How many of you can really say that God is everything that you need him to be? I imagine if I pass the microphone around today and ask some of you what God has been to you, I can only imagine because for some he's been a father. For some, he's been a mother. For some, he's been a doctor, a lawyer. He's everything the song says. He's everything to me. Amen. God is good on today. I'm here to just give a, a couple of brief announcements, uh, and then we'll be uh, taking up our offering on today. Uh, first of all, uh, I didn't see any bulletins, so I just wanted to make sure I touched a couple of things. We're having an auxiliary leaders meeting uh, directly after church, so you, if you are participating or if you are uh, a leader in one of the auxiliaries, we definitely need you to stay. We have some valuable information to share. It should take no longer than five to ten minutes. Also, we're having a fundraiser. Somebody say fundraiser. Amen. We're trying to get our lights and stuff restored in the parking lot, and we're going to be having uh, Brother Live's ribs. Amen. Amen. Somebody say double portion. Amen. But we just want you to be mindful of that. We should have the forms in the back for that. If you want to grab one of those and participate uh, at this time, amen, we are going to ask you to stand as we, amen, go before the Lord with our offering. If you need an offering envelope, make sure you raise your hands. The ushers uh, can make sure that you have one. We believe that Kansas City Community Church is good ground. Amen. That when you sow your seed in the good ground, the Bible says that you'll reap 30, 60, and 100 fold. So I'm just going to believe God for a hundredfold blessing on today. So I don't know what it is in your life that you've been asking from God or that you're believing God for. But when you give your seed today, I just want you to have that thought in your mind. I just want you to hold your seed in your hand and confess and say, God, you promised it and I believe it. God, you promised it and I believe it today. Some of you might need some things that money can't even buy. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that blessing that money cannot even buy on today, only that God can do. So when God does it, there's no, there's no mistaking that God did it on today. So as you hold your offering in your hand, just say, Father God, Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you on today, God, Lord, for all that you've done, what you're doing, 
and what you're going to do, God. Lord, we believe your word that says that if we come to you believing and asking anything in your son's name, that it will be done for us. Lord, as we give on today, God, Lord, we ask you to multiply it. Lord, we ask you to stretch it, God. Lord, we ask you to bless it. Lord, we ask you, God, to return it back to us, God. Lord, 30, 60, and 100 fold in the name of Jesus. Lord, according to your promise, God, for our lives, Lord, according to our needs, God, Lord, Lord, according to God, Lord, the anointing, God, Lord, that you've given unto us. Lord, bless this house, God. Lord, bless this preacher. Lord, bless your people today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We just ask you to give at Kansas City Community Church. We just bring our offering. Be careful of the steps. Amen. You made a way. Don't know how, but you did. Made a way. Standing here. Not knowing how we'll get through this test. But holding on. To faith we know that Nothing can catch you by surprise You got this figured out And you're watching us now But when it looks as if we can't win in your arms and step in and everything we need you supply you got this in control and now we know that you you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over. Lord, you, you made a way. And we're standing here only because you made a way. You made a way.
Don't know 
Hallelujah. It's the highest praise. You may, you may never been there when your back was against the wall. You had no way to turn. But God stepped in. He showed up right on time. He made a way for you. Hallelujah. He opened doors that no man could close. Hallelujah. He made a way. He made a way. Don't know how, but he did it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, don't miss your opportunity to give God some praise. your hope for tomorrow. He's your hiding place. <laughs> Said if it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be on this morning? Where would you be? Where would you be? Mm. Hallelujah. Preston, 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 can you just give me uh, just a little of greatest thy faithfulness? Just, just, a, just a little, just a little. Some of, some of y'all ain't, y'all ain't even ready, amen, on this morning, amen. I, I, maybe if I, just, just a little. Mm, mm. Woo. Thy faithfulness. That might help some of y'all out. <laughs> oh Lord, thy father.
Look at your neighbor and say, it's not over. Whatever you're going through, it's not over. Because God is faithful. He ain't forgot about you. He ain't turned his back on you. It's not over. It's not over. Woo! Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. 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 This service is subject to change by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm not in control. You're not in control. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Woo! Hallelujah. I don't have to preach. <laughs> Amen. This, this message won't spoil. Amen. I don't have to preach. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. I've been telling y'all, I've been warning y'all, hallelujah, I've been letting you know that it's on its way, amen, and we ain't going to be able to contain it, we ain't going to be able to water it down, we're not going to be able to put it out as much as you're going to want to stop the Holy Spirit and say go, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo! Wee! Mm, mm, mm. See, I wish my wife was here. She's out of town. Because if I can't depend on nobody else praising God, I can show depend on my wife. But I can't wait to call her and say, baby, you wasn't there. And we had some church. Woo, let's give this praise team a hand clap of blessing, these musicians. Hey Amen. Now let's give God <laughs> some praise. Hallelujah. I don't even know if I can make it through this message. Hey Amen. It ain't nothing but 11 o'clock, y'all. <laughs> we can praise God until that snow melt. I ain't worried about it. <laughs> Woo wee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. I was just thinking, hey, you know how God deals with me. I had to jump. I seen some of my brothers, amen, which I love that, amen, jumping and celebrating a, a God and, and worshiping, amen. I, I love that, amen. Amen. I, but I was thinking about, amen, you know how God deals with me. Hey, when, you, when you're doing your cleaning, amen, and, and you are, are, are washing clothes, there's some clothes that have a stain in them, amen. Amen, and then there's some clothes that don't matter how, how many times you put it in the washing machine, that it seems to, to come out and there's still things that are there, impurities that, that you have to face. But they have a product out there, amen, that you can buy in the store and, it, and, and, it, and they call it Shout It Out, amen. Amen. You, 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 you buy it, amen, and you put it on the stain, amen, and, and, and you, let the, you let it soak in, amen. There's something, sometimes, you have to just shout it out, amen. You can't, you can't work it out on your own. You can't, you can't get it by just lifting your hand. Sometimes you have to, have to shout it out. I ain't going to mess with y'all this morning. Hallelujah. So when I seen the men jumping, I said, Lord, they shouting it out. Whatever they going through, they're shouting it out. Woo! Hallelujah. Hey, baby, you ain't never been there. <laughs> baby, you ain't never been there. Keep living. Woo! Keep living. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Woo-wee. I might need a fan up here. Lord, have mercy. Woo! Now, we're going to move forward, but the Lord is good. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm a praiser. I'm a worshiper. 
I could do this all day. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. God, even now for this preaching opportunity, hallelujah, Lord, we ask that this word, amen, this word that goes forth, God, that it will, God, touch our hearts, God, it will bless us on today, God, not only will it touch our hearts and our minds, God, but we will be open to change, God, if we come into your house and hear the word and hear the worship, but we leave the same way. We didn't change. So on today, God, we declare change in the name of Jesus. Change in the name of Jesus. God bless the people of God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, them slid a fan up here. Y'all playing. Amen. <laughs> My dad, when he preached, amen, I didn't understand it. And I don't preach as hard as he preached, but he would come home and his suits would be sweat drenched. And I was like, man, daddy, that's, that's a lot. And he said, son, they didn't have the air on. I said, oh, Jesus. Amen. But we thank God for the move of the spirit. Amen. This is something, we, this, is, this is not manufactured. <laughs> Amen. This is what the Holy Spirit does when we give in to the Spirit and we allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. We can't plan this. We cannot orchestrate this. It's by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we simply say we submit. We surrender to your will and to your way. Whatever you want to do to us, with us, for us, we say, here I am. Here I am be your testimony on this morning. Amen. Before I engage into this message, I won't be before you long. Amen. Just thank God for, once again, this opportunity. But I want us to recognize uh, Brother Richard, amen, Coy and his lodge brothers that are worshiping, amen, with us today. I, I know that, that some churches... And I'm glad that we're not that type of church and we don't fit in that mode. Uh, that when it comes to sororities, amen, and uh, fraternities, large brothers and large sisters, uh, amen, and I'm not endorsing anybody, but if the truth be told, uh, some churches feel a little uneasy, amen? Yeah, y'all can talk to me on today, amen? Yeah. Amen. They feel a little uneasy and, and uh, they get nervous, amen, but uh, I've done my research. And what I found out is that these organizations, amen, uh, do more for some of the community that these churches are in, the churches that have these unsettled opinion that, that these organizations, they come in and they do more than some of the churches in that community, amen? Amen, they, they, they are there, amen. And so I'm of the persuasion uh, that it takes a village. <laughs> I'm of the persuasion it takes a village, amen to uplift a community. It takes the church. It takes these type of brothers that go out and, and, and where there's no fathers in the home, they're there to mentor. They're there to provide some guidance. Yeah. Amen. So, so when Brother Richard said, can we come? I said, Brother Richard, y'all coming to worship? He said, we coming to worship. I thought about Psalms 122 and, and 1. David gives the invitation for worship. He says, I was glad when they said unto me, he made it personal first. Then he said, let us, 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 go into the house of the Lord. What? Together. Amen. So I thank God for them being here on today. Amen. And, and uh, Brother Richard is, is, is a good brother, and he's dear to my heart. And when he asked, he's been asking for three years. And every year was something. Amen. I said, on this year, if these brothers have a desire to come and sit in the house of God, who are we? <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Uh, y'all might not like me on this morning. <laughs> I'm going to preach to y'all anyway. Praise the Lord. I'm going to get right into this message. I'm not going to bore your patience. I'm going to give you what God has given me. Amen. And I'm going to sit down and count the hours until my wife's plane arrives. Amen. 
Mm -hmm. I miss my baby. Amen. Man, I got up this morning and I and, and and I was just moving around and I was like, wait a minute, something ain't right. Amen. But she uh, she's visiting a friend uh, in Louisiana. She see she called me this morning. She sends her love. Uh, she's actually out there ministering and doing what God has called her to do. So um, I am, I'm looking forward to her return. On last Sunday, I I stated that I would be preaching a a two part uh, sermon entitled. Where are we going and how will we get there? And I think it is imperative that we attempt to answer uh, these two crucial questions if we desire to be all God wants us to be. On this morning, I want to unwrap uh, the first question. Amen. I pray that you come back on next week and we'll uh, deal with the second part of the question. But the first question on today is, where are we going? Look at the neighbor and say, where are we going? Whether you accept it or not, on today, uh, we are all on a journey. All of us, no matter uh, whatever stage of life that we are currently living in, you can find yourself in one of these four positions. Either you're moving forward. Man, I, I like to move forward. I don't know about you. Praise the Lord, either, either you're moving backwards uh, or either you are sidestepping. Amen. When you sidestep what you do, you allow somebody to gain access to your space. Mm, yes. Or you're stationary. You're immobile. Uh, better word that I could use that y'all can identify with, you stuck. Mm, a lot of people are, are stuck. What this simply means is, when you talk about these four directions, what this means is that, that all of us are going somewhere, but we are not all in the same place. Even in here, everybody, we're here, we're a congregation, we're worshiping together, but I, I guarantee you everybody's worship ain't in the same place. <laughs> uh, because, see, somebody don't know your, your story, amen, of, of what God has brought you through, and, and they don't know your testimony, and, and they maybe haven't been through what you've been through. So, so, so you're not in the same, you're not in the same place. Amen. We're worshiping, but, 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 but we're in different places. Even in the church, which is repeatedly identified as the body of Christ, we all have different tasks and we have, we have different roles. Uh, uh, in, in Romans 12 and 4, in New Living Translation, it says, just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. So as a body of believers, we are to actively be seeking God's vision for the framework of the ministry. That's, that's our responsibility on this morning. Yes, having a vision is essential for the church because a vision and, and purpose, it motivates by giving clear direction. Amen. The Bible makes it clear that without a vision, the people what? So visions are great. You know, every pastor, every every if you are if you are a man, a man, and you you are uh, the head of your household, and you have a family, you should have a vision for your family. Amen. Amen. It shouldn't be that you're gonna just provide and you're gonna just come home, take off your boots and your shoes, and and put your feet up and not help your wife cook. Amen. And come on, somebody, and and not do no chores around the house. You gotta have a vision, or you'll be by yourself. Amen. But here's the complication with, with, with vision. At any time, God can, can deal with the leader or leaders and can, can revise or revamp the vision, causing it to change. See, that's, that's the problem with a vision. At any time, it, it can change. It, 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 can be, it can be altered. But no matter how much the boundaries of a vision may be altered, when it comes to the church of God, the fundamental core principle of the church, which is found in Matthews 28 and 19, should never change. My, my Bible scholars, y'all already know that scripture. It says, 
Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is, this is very essential for the church that is looking for a direction and wanting to go somewhere. If a church is not willing to, to, to take on these principles, they can begin to lose their sense of direction. Their forward, forward progress will begin to struggle. People will slowly begin to drift away. Leaders will begin pleasing the most influential people and the ones who give the most money to the church. Uh, <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't never seen that before. Amen. She got to sing that solo. She, her ties, is, they, they pretty large. But, Pastor, she can't sing. It don't matter. Put your fingers in your ear. Because if she stops giving, the church is going to struggle. Oh, y'all ain't, oh, come on, somebody. And when all these things happen and other things begin to evolve in ministry, what happens is the opportunity for ministry begins to dissolve. Not because the church does not look good on the outside. Not because the church doesn't have anything to offer, but, but, but the problem becomes a bad because the church rather stands still than go. Hmm. The church rather become comfortable than to become uncomfortable. The hardest thing is to go out and witness the people that you don't know. Amen. Why? It ain't because they ain't dressed right and it, it ain't because, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, they, they look funny or whatever the case may be. It's because you're uncomfortable because you're not in a controlled environment. When they come to church, it's okay. <laughs> they in your house. They in God's house. And, and, and if you see them, you're in a controlled environment and you know if things get rough, if things get, get out of hand, you got other brothers and sisters in Christ that will stand with you, that will, that will support you. But when you're out there in the streets and the highways and byways, you look around your surroundings and it's more of them than it is you. And you become uncomfortable. We see this example when we look in the word of God in Revelations 3, amen, verses 1 and 2. The, the, the writing of John the Revelator uh, to the, ch the seven churches of Revelation, uh, Jesus quickly and clearly condemns the, the state of the, the Sardinian church. In, in verse 1, he says, I know your deeds. You have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. He says, wake up. Look at your neighbor and say, wake up. <laughs> wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of God. See, this church had a good reputation, but they were spiritually lifeless. They appeared to be moving in the right direction, but uh, their navigation wasn't coming from a position of truth. I remember, um, this a while back, me and my son, we would be sitting on the couch at my house, amen. And uh, he was young, and I had video games, amen. I still got a couple at the house, amen. Don't play them as much. But back when I first got married, amen, my wife was working, and I worked shift work. And, and so uh, during the day, I was at home. While she was at work, and then I'd work in the evening. So I'd be sitting there playing my video game. My son be sitting next to me, and he said, Daddy, I said, what, son? I want to play. I said, oh, man. <laughs> so I, 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 would, I, would, I, would take, I would take the control, amen, and I would give it to my son. Amen. I, of course, I'd save it first, amen. Didn't want him to mess up my high score. I, I'd give him the control, and, and, and I, I would put it in his, in his hands, and he would, he would take the control, and, and I noticed that he would oftentimes turn it upside down, amen, and he began to, to push buttons, and even though the control was upside down, he was, he was still uh, able to play the game, but he was operating out of false truth. He was operating out of false truth because the, the controller was not positioned in the right direction. I'm going somewhere with this. Amen. 
But, but what, I, what I noticed, what really stuck out to me is even though the controller was upside down, my son was not concerned with the reality because he was satisfied with the results. Mm, mm, mm. He wasn't. He he wasn't really concerned with how he was playing the game. If, if if things were going right, he had the controller in the wrong position. But he didn't matter because the only thing mattered to him is that he was in the game and that he was playing, that he was having fun. But the fact of the matter is, he was operating out of false truth, and the only reason that he didn't say anything is because he was satisfied. I hate to be the bearer of bad news on this morning. If you are living in a place, amen, amen, where, where you're just satisfied, amen. And see, we're talking about where are we going, and some people just because they're going somewhere uh, uh, they, they, and they're getting the results that they think they should get, they feel that they're good. But just because you're going somewhere, that don't mean that you're in the place that God wants you to be. Hmm. You know, we do things sometimes and we feel good and we say, Lord, I think I've arrived. Hey, hey man, I know I ain't got that type of folk in here. You know, you accomplish a whole lot of things and you got a whole lot of letters at the end of your name, amen, and you can go and write checks and don't have to check your banking account to see it, if that check is going to clear because you got so much money in there. It really don't matter. I ain't never experienced that in my life. But it's some people that I know that might be out here on this morning that have that opportunity and after a while you feel that I've went somewhere and I've been there and I've done that and I'm okay now but God is saying <laughs> you still ain't where I want you to be praise the Lord if you're living in a in a place where the devices and the pleasures of this world have become your main course somebody say main course amen amen your week is not complete unless you get that phone call and you're able to go out and get lit <laughs> amen older folk if you don't know what that means ask the younger folk Yo, your week is not complete unless you get that phone call and you can drink up something and you can smoke something. Amen. If you find yourself in that position on a weekly basis, you are not where God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all ain't going to like me on this morning. Amen. If you don't have love for your neighbor, amen, if you don't have love for your brother, if you don't have love for your sister, I hate to tell you on this morning, you are not where God wants you to be. Praise the Lord, if you're not striving to live a life that is pleasing and acceptable to God all the time, over time, any time, you are not where you're supposed to be. Mm -mm -mm. Something that we have to focus in on and have to really trust God and really, really make sure that we maintain Amen. When people are talking about maintaining your integrity, people just think it's talking about your name. Hey, I hate to, I hate to tell you, it's your lifestyle, too. <laughs> Amen. You can have a good name, but your lifestyle can be trash. Can I say that? Amen. <laughs> you can mess up your good name by your lifestyle. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so a lot of times we're, we're trying to fit into this mode. Amen. Hey, this ain't even in my notes. And we're trying to be accepted according to the world standards. And we don't realize that God looks at us and we, we we're asking God for directions. We have interference because our life does not match up with the word of God. And then we want to blame God and say, God, why am I going nowhere fast? God, where are you at? Lord, I can't hear your voice. Take off them earphones and stop listening to Carly B, and you might can hear God's voice. Ah. Proverbs 14 and 12, there is a, a, a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end leads to destruction. There's a way that seems right to us. We do the best that we can sometimes, but when we don't add God as the main ingredients, guess what? It always ends. It always ends into a bad situation. Destruction, spiritual death, even natural death. But the way seems right to us. We have validated, we have co-signed off on it, and we've said, Lord, it, 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 you know, if it, they, they, they got you saying, if it feel right, do it. No, I don't, if it, don't, it, it don't do that. It's a lot of stuff that feel right, don't do it, though. 
because there's consequences that you will receive, amen, that don't feel right after you get through doing what felt right, amen. Y'all figure that out later on. We have to stop playing with God, y'all. I'm, I'm telling you on this morning, we, we have to stop praying for guidance, but really in our hearts, we want God to support our agenda. Lord, help me, Lord, help me, but in your heart, you're saying, Lord, I want to do it my way. <laughs> Lord, I need your guidance, and when God begins to open the doors, and if that door is not the door that you want to open or go through, then the next thing you say, Lord, can I get another, can I get door B and C, please? Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? I know y'all was probably looking for a flow chart and y'all was probably looking for me to go down. It, it's very simple. Whatever the Lord gives me, that's what I have to give you. Amen. Amen. I, I found now that planning a lot and saying you're going to do this and, and saying you're going to do that, it motivates the people, but it don't keep them. Because the first time you don't accomplish what you said you thought you were going to accomplish, people will let you down and they will abandon you. Can I, can I get an amen? Woo, we, we gonna get new, we, uh, the vision is we gonna get new robes and we ain't doing that y'all, but I'm just giving you an example. Everybody join the choir and when we don't get new robes, everybody quit. Just to give you an example how, how people can be. Where are we going? The Bible simply says in Matthew 5 and 13, it says, you and me are the salt of the earth. Hmm, wrap your mind around that. You and me are the salt of Leavenworth Road. <laughs> you, you and me are the salt of F.L. Slago, amen. You and me are the salt of Wellborn Elementary School. You and me are the salt of, 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 of y'all get where I'm going? We are the salt. We are the salt. We are the salt. We are the salt, amen. And, 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 and just to give you some, some, just a little bit about salt, the only way that, that salt can add flavor, the only way that salt can, can, can preserve it, salt must make contact with something. That's, that's the only way that, that's the only way it can, it can carry out its purpose. It has to make contact. It has to make contact. If you don't know where you are going, why not start becoming salt in your environment? Don't have a clue. Why not become a, a salt to where, where you at? Salt to your job. Making contact with, with people who, 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 who need help with, with, with bitterness and, and those that are, are confused and, 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 and making contact with those who need spiritual healing. Why, why, not, be that, why not be that salt shaker? Mm. You might be the one that causes them to say, what must I do? to be saved because you made contact because you was not just salt in the church. Mm, mm, mm. Some of y'all are pepper, amen. I ain't going to mess with that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Y'all look at the properties of pepper. I don't even want to go there. Yeah, pepper will cause you to sneeze. <laughs> pepper will cause you to walk away, amen. So, I ain't talking about y'all. I know y'all all salt in here, amen. Holy Spirit just dropped that in my spirit, amen. <laughs> I, me, myself, I, I consider myself as seasoned salt. Amen. <laughs> that, <laughs> amen. Because, uh, you know, it's different levels of salt. Amen. Praise the Lord. They got that seasoned salt. Amen. They got that Cajun. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think I'm that slap your mama type of seasoning salt. Y'all better stop on this morning. But preacher, but preacher, help me out. What if people begin to, 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 to uh, tell me about my past? And what if people come and, and they begin to, 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 to whisper about my, my, my imperfections, why I am I am trying to be salt and I'm, I'm trying to make contact? If somebody, hey man, you have my permission. If somebody begins to, to, to share and, and begin to whisper behind your back while you are making contact, I, I want you to remind them of the words of this song. Song simply goes like this, please be patient with me. 
because God ain't through with me yet. I, I know some of y'all might have arrived, but, but I'm still under construction. God is still working on me. I still got some, some things that I need to get right. I still got some places that I need to check and shine the light on. So please be patient with me. Because God is not through with me yet. When he gets through with me, <laughs> I'll be what he wants me to be. But while I'm making contact, or you don't have to remind me, I know that I'm coming up short. I know that my righteousness is of filthy rags. I know that I've sinned. I know that I've met, but I'm trying to help you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh. As I prepare to close, amen, say the first close, amen. Hallelujah. My, my question, I love to ask questions because it, it, it causes people to think. Amen. A lot of times when we come in the, in, in the church, the preacher just preaches at you. Amen. And you have to try to gather and absorb as much as you can. But, but in my messages, I like to ask questions. Amen. You can write the question down. You can go home. You can think about it or you can ponder the answer while you're sitting in your seats. But I like to engage. Amen. I like the call to, to response, to know that we're all on the same page. I don't want you to deliver. Because, see, I have to give an account for you when I go up to heaven. Amen. And, and I stand before Jesus Christ and, and he says, I've given you this platform and I, I've given you this opportunity to share the good news. But some of your members said you wasn't talking about nothing. I don't want to take that chance, so I got I to gotta preach, and I got I to gotta share the word. I, I got to make you think. I got to make you wonder. Amen. So when I get up there, he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. So I, I pose this question to you on today. Amen. What would you attempt for God? What risk would you take? Where would you go if you knew that you couldn't fail? Mm -mm -mm. So see, a lot of times God tells us things and he reveals stuff in our spirit, but we, we, we get fearful and we, we allow doubt to come in because we wonder if we're going to succeed or fail. Cancel out that possibility of failure. What would you do? Where would you go? Who would you contact? If you knew that as soon as you made that contact and you picked up the phone and you said, Jesus loves you. I don't care what, you, what you're in. I don't care the mess that you're in. I don't, I don't care what's going on in your life. I just want to let you know that Jesus loves you. And, and, and not only does he love you, he died for you. And, and no matter where you're at in your life on today, I, I guarantee you, if you call on his name, amen, he'll, he'll, he'll shine on your situation. If you, you yell out, Jesus, I need your help, he will be there to help you because he's a shepherd. And if you become one of his sheep, he said, I got you. You know that as soon as you pose that question, that, that they would say, yes, that's where I want to go, and that's what I, I want to do. You, you, failure was not an option. The book of Joshua is very inspirational to me. We all know those that have studied the word and are students of the word of God. God had made a promise to the Israelites under the administration of Moses, but now Moses has died. He's no longer on the scene. God has called him. Home. Joshua is now commissioned uh, with the continuation of God's purpose to move Israel across the Jordan and into the promised land. But Joseph, Joshua needs, sorry, he needs, some, he needs some direction. He needs some encouragement. I don't never, we're talking about where are we going. I don't know if God has ever told you or led you to go somewhere or to do something, but in the, in the, in the, in the midst of the journey, you, you needed some encouragement. You, you needed some direction because you, wasn't, you was unsure about yourself. Amen. You, 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 God said, I want you to, to take hold of this new ministry, or I want you to, to do this in the church. I want you to do this. But, Lord, you don't understand. Amen. I'm a pew warmer. Amen. That's, that's my specialty. I, I just want to show up, catch a little praise and worship, get a little word, and I'm in my car. God, you don't understand. That don't really fit into my schedule. As a matter of fact, God, that's a little bit inconvenient. I, I know we get out of church super early, but, Lord, I, I mean, God, I, I really like to be at my house by 12 o'clock. 
But, 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 but God continues to pull on your heartstrings and say, I have something for you to do. And you battle with it. <laughs> it becomes a tug of war. Amen. It becomes a spiritual fight because God has told you to do something, but, 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 but you are frustrated. But then somebody comes and they begin to speak over your life. And they begin to pray with you and for you and say, God's going to give you what you need. That's where Joshua was. He looked at Moses and he looked at the pedigree and he looked at his, his, his resume and he said, I can't, I cannot, I cannot walk in those shoes. I'm nervous, I'm scared, and he was, he was frustrated. But Joshua 1.9, love this verse, says, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. What am I saying on this morning? I'm, I'm saying that wherever we go, wherever you go, man, God will always be with you. And that when you, when, you, when you make up in your mind that you're going to follow him, I, 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 and I'm going to give you a scripture, we find out that, that his way, somebody say his way, is the best way. It's the best way. Psalms 18 and 30 says, as for God, he, he, his ways are, are perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He, he shields all who takes refuge in him. He said his ways are perfect. How, how our assignments get messed up is when we, when we add in, <laughs> amen, our emotions and our feelings, amen, what we think is going to work. When God is not moving fast enough, the only time that you should be still is when in the, in the word of God says, be still and know, know that I'm God. That's the only time you should be sitting still. Other than that, we shouldn't be moving, but, but sometimes we take it up on ourselves to help God. God, I got you. Yeah, I got you, God. Don't you? No, 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 no. It's a whole lot of other people in the church that really need you right now. They dealing with some. some they dealing with some major stuff. So God, you can, you can, you can decrease on my end and increase on their end. I, I got you, God. And you know what God will do? He say, do your thing. Because you're gonna be one of those folks that, that really need me. You're gonna need one of those. You're gonna be one of those folks two weeks from now. Because once we put our hand in it. Once we try to fix it, once we try to make it over, once we become uh, the, the potter and, and, and we, and we, and we rep reposition ourselves and we forget that we're the clay, then we, make, then we make a jacked up what we want to call masterpiece that has to be remolded, refinished, and redone. Instead of trying to make our own way or, or to force our way, man, or even standing still, uh, the psalmist writes in Psalms 25 and 4 through 5, this is David, uh, the praise of David. This is, what our, this is what our prayer should be on today. Where are we going, Pastor? I I'm about to tell you, amen. It says, show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me, for us to follow. Then it says, lead me by your truth. Mm, let that sink in. And teach us and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. You are the God who saves us all day long. Every time you wake up, before you go to bed, no matter what you're going through, all day long it says, I will put my hope not in the economy, not in the president, not in my 401k, not in what I think my children are going to do for me when I retire. Amen. Come on, somebody. Not what the church can do for me. Amen. But I'm going to put my hope and my trust in you. It should be our prayer. God has a set course we must follow if we decide to try to go on our own way and not follow the path God has set for us, then we will end up in a place that he hasn't designed for us. Where are we going if we, if, if we don't latch on to God's perfect will for us, that we'll end up somewhere that, that we didn't, didn't want to be, a place that we shouldn't be, a place where we don't need to be. We have to follow 
trust his word, believe in him. As I close, the final closing. Wherever you are on this morning, uh, for whatever reason you might be feeling that your life, amen, is going in the wrong direction. You, you might be sitting here right now saying, Lord, where, where am I supposed to be? <laughs> Lord, I've been on this journey for a while, and it seemed like I'm, I, I am an extension of the, the children of the Israelites. I've been wondering. Some of us 10 years, some of us 30 years, some of us 40 years, some of us, hey, you know, you get the point. Hey, Amen. Lord, I've been wondering. I've been going in circles. You, you, have a, you have a promise already prepared for me. You, you, have, you have things that, 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 that the enemy has taken from me that you promised to, to give back. But, Lord, it seems like every year, every month, I, I keep going and, and revisiting the same trials, the, the same frustration, the same pain. Lord, Lord, where, where, where should I be at? You've been trusting yourself, <laughs> your resources. Lord, I'm broke. I, I'll go and get another payday loan. <laughs> Lord, I, I, I'll put my car up. Lord, I, I, I'll rob Peter to pay Paul. I never understood that my daddy would always say that. It was seven kids, and we was always broke. I didn't understand it then. And I would hear my mom and daddy, they talking about bills. I understand it now. Daddy said, well, I'm going to just have to rob Peter to pay Paul. And I'm like, you're a preacher. How are you robbing somebody? I understood the analogy when I, when I begin to grow up and you have the light bill and you, you have the water bill and you have the gas bill and you got to pay a little bit on this one, amen, in order to keep this one from getting shut off. And, and you got to give a little here and take a little bit from there. I begin to understand it. I had Paul, I had Peter, I had John, I had Matthew, I had all of them. You want your, you want your direction to change. You are at a detour in your life. You are at a, 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 a fork in the road. Amen. There is a path that is in front of you, and, and you can either take the the broad road, the wide road, or you can take the narrow one and you're, you're scratching your head and saying, Lord, where do you want me to be? Hey, Amen. This is your opportunity. Ministers, y'all can come. I'm finished. Hey, Amen. Praise the Lord. Ministers, y'all can, can begin to come because we're going we gonna to pray for whoever needs prayer. But, but I, I, want, I want to give you the opportunity on this morning. Amen. To simply turn your life around. Amen. If you're going the wrong direction, the, the quickest way that you can, the quickest way that you can get on the right path is you make a what? A U-turn? Amen. Your GPS will tell you. As soon as you pass your, your, your design point, your design exit, your GPS says what? Make a U-turn. Some of us in here on today need to make some U-turns. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> we've been on the right path, and we've been doing all that we thought we could do. And, and at some point in the time, we, we stopped listening to God. We stopped listening to our, our spiritual GPS system, and we thought that we could get to where we needed to get to by ourselves. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart on today, saying, make a U-turn. Get back on course. If that's you on today... Amen. I read the scripture on, on Easter Sunday when I was preaching, amen, and it's such a profound scripture. I could read it, I could read it every, every Sunday, and it would fit whatever message I was preaching. John 14 and 6, he says, I am the way. This is Jesus talking and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through, through me. Romans 10 and 13 says, anyone that calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? U-turn. Where are we going? Some of us have to make a U-turn on this morning. We cannot continue to operate in false truth, being satisfied with our reality when the reality is going in the wrong direction. It's your, it's your decision. It's your choice. It's, 
it's, it's your call. It's, it's your plea. You're the one that, that, that has to make uh, that determination and not only uh, believe in your heart, but you have to act on it. You have to say, Lord, here I am standing in the need of prayer. It's not my mother. It's not my, my father. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer. Lord, if you don't do it, it ain't going to get done. Telling you, stop taking your burdens home. Amen. Stop, stop leaving the church, taking your burdens home. Stop leaving the church, taking your pain home. Stop leaving the church, taking your heartache. Stop leaving the church, taking your frustrations home. Stop leaving the church, taking your disappointments home. Stop leaving the house of God and going home the same way that you came in. Be anxious for nothing but in all things by prayer and supplication. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guide your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. At the foot of the cross is where we lay our burdens at. This is your opportunity, amen.